Hello everyone, it is time to add a train sculptor to my train plugin. But before that, let me tell you one thing, and then I will talk about my train sculptor. It seems there is another Godot train plugin in the way. Johan, the lead developer of the Godot, announced in Twitter that there is a Godot train plugin which is coming in these days. I don't know if this is the official train plugin of uh, Godot or not because Johan announced that. And as soon as they release their plugin, I will take a look at it and also I will compare that to my plugin. Please note, I don't want to compete with anyone. I will do it just for pure science. The upcoming plugin is built with a group of people and the only developer behind my plugin is me. Of course, if someone wants to contribute, I will appreciate that. But up to this point, it is only me. Right now, the only information that I have is that they use a clip map train. Basically, the train will move with camera. And this is a completely different system compared to my train. My train is fixed and it's divided to chunks and region. And it will be really interesting to compare these two systems together and see the result. Anyway, I will finish my train and continue to support that. And I think this is interesting that this both train system exists for Godot Game Engine. Okay, let's go and see how my train sculptor work. For now, I just added three brushes, but a lot of other brushes will come. I spend most of my time to build a good API so I can create my brush on top of that. And at the end of this video, I will talk about this API. So you can import your height map and start from there, or you can create an empty train. If you don't know how to import height map, please watch my other video in the video description. Now here I just create an empty train, set a data directory for the train, set your desired train size, also correct the region size, and then click on create grid. This will create an empty train. Now if you look at train tools, up there you can see a star with a save button. Each time you see that, it means that your train has something unsaved. And please save your project if you create something good. As I save it, you can see in my data folder for height map data for each region has been created. Please note this sculptor still does not have on the redo support. So back up your data directory at each point of your work and save a lot. Now just activate paint. When you activate in paint mode, you cannot do anything else except painting. If you want to do another operation in Godot, first deactivate paint mode. Another thing is that when you activate paint mode, train update will deactivate it. So you can activate that if you see some part of your train is not have a good quality and deactivate that again. But you know, I will correct all of this in future version of my plugin. After activating paint mode, a panel will appear in right dock. And here first option is brush size. You can also change brush size with plus and minus on your keyboard. Please note, if you choose a big brush size, your computer might struggle a little bit because the amount of the modified pixel will increase with big brush sizes. With second option, you can switch between height brush and color brush. Basically, we have two kinds of brush. One is for modifying train shape by modifying height map. And other one is for modifying color. For example, modifying a splat map to change textures on train. For now, I did not implement color brush, but I will add this also later. Next, we have a list of the brush, which for now, there are three of them. So let's take a look at the first one. Raise will bring up or down your train. You can also change the hardness of the brush like this. Now, if I put hardness down to zero, you can see at the edge of the brush, we will have a subtle change. By changing the amount value, you can increase or decrease the amount of the train deformation. You can also put the amount value to a negative number to lower the train like this. Now let's take a look at the second brush. This is called a two height and basically will bring the train to a certain height. So here, look at the position of the mouse. Basically, this brush tries to bring everything else around its region to the height of the mouse position, like this. You can bring the hardness down and then the edge of the train will be more soft, like this. If you change the offset to some number, basically this try to bring everything at the height of the mouse position plus offset, like this. Now by moving your brush with this in certain direction, you can make a nice effect like a slope. 
like this now let's talk about absolute option here if you activate absolute it will bring everything to absolute world height position with this option mouse position does not matter anymore and everything will bring to the offset height in a world coordinate system but the question is how we should understand what is the height of each point when if you look at the mtrain tools there are two numbers which they change when i move my mouse one is height where my mouse is pointing other is the distance from camera to the point where mouse is pointing these numbers will help you a lot to understand the scale of the train because many times when you create a train it's really happened that you make everything with wrong scale but in case you want to understand better the scale of your train first deactivate paint mode and then activate the human figure in m train tool menu and by the way i paint that human figure up there i hope that's look good as you activate that a human model will appear and you can understand the train scale much better now for example this point height is 38 so i put number 38 to offset value and i also activate absolute option and now when i paint everything will be brought to this height but there is another problem we have some hard edges well this is where we can use the next brush which is a smooth brush i just use that to smooth everywhere like this for a smooth brush we have two algorithm but i will add more algorithm later also a smooth brush will not work for a smoothing a large scale thing also by changing amount you can define how much you want to smooth the region under this brush what if i tell also you can build this brush easily Yes, I design an API which everyone can, with a little knowledge of the C++, add a brush to this train plugin. It seems something magical, but it is not. Let me show you. Go to add-on folder, mtrain, gd extension, src, height brushes. And these are three brushes that you saw. So let me open one of them, for example, mrays. So every brush must inherit from m height brush class. That is the first rule. After that, each brush must implement method blows. Get name will return the name of the brush and it should be unique. Get property list will return a list of the property for brush. For example, in this case, we have two property. One is hardness and other one is amount. If you look at this code, you will understand that easily. Set property will be called when user in Godot editor change the value of the property so here you should adjust everything you want for example as you can see here if the property name is hardness i set the value to hardness and so on well before the draw is something which i did not implement yet but basically it is going to be called before each draw if you want to calculate something special now the last function is the most important one it is called get height basically mtrain will call this function and will provide two value to this function first is x and second is y x and y are basically the position of the pixel for train under brush area what mtrain plugin asks you here is this i give you this pixel coordinate please give me a height value so here you should calculate the new height value and return that other thing that you should note is that this function will be called in multiple thread basically mtrain will break the area under the brush into different pieces and calculate each part in a different cpu thread for maximum performance in this function you have access to grid and based on the information that you can achieve from the grid you can calculate height with different effect so let's see what i did for raise brush first i ask the grid the 3d position of my pixel in the world after that i calculate the distance of this pixel to the center of my brush then i divide that to the brush radius so everything will bring between zero and one and finally i use a smooth step function and i add the hardness effect to this value to create a good fall off effect and i multiply that to amount and finally, I add this height to the current height of the pixel. After you finish creating your brush, you should register that in the brush manager. Just include your brush here and call add height brush and pass a new instance of your brush there. If you have any idea for new brushes, let me know in comment section. So my program now is to add color brushes and then a lot of other optimization still need to be done. I hope I will see some comment with some new and great ideas. Who knows? Thanks for watching.